Hi everybody. So in the last video I covered how I changed the sprite source to make it look like the character was walking in uh, the four different directions. And today I'd like to show you how I changed the cycle through the sprites to, to make it um, to add the character walking animation. So taking a look at the sprite sheet here, you see um, the walking animation seems to be the first six here um, in each row. Uh, but I will go with the first three uh, because that's where the character has the instrument on his back and I like that one best. So to animate, um, I'm just cycling through each of these clips. Um, so one, two, three, and then go back to two before starting again at one. So I just cycle through these in order and it should look like the character is moving. Now I went through a couple of um, tutorials for this and what I'm going to show you is the method that I liked best that worked out well for me. So to start off with, knowing that this is what we're working with, I have to store each of these images in an array because I'm just going to cycle through the index, indexes in the array to show the appropriate clip uh, when I render the character. Um, I'm going to add these to the global context uh, variable here and I'll just call them something like, um, let's say, player left clips because this has multiple clips and this will be an array. I'll have four clips in the array. Now, I started with just doing a couple of integers in a tuple. Um, and an i32 because the SDL rect uh, struct takes an i32 for the source and for the destination. But storing it this way for the x and the y is not so nice. So I instead created um, a position struct to, to, use, uh, to use and just make it easier to read. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in actually because I already have this finished for you and it'll speed things up a bit. So I have these. Um, the position struct just has an X and Y field. So X is an I32 and Y is an I32. Again, because the SDL rect uses an I32, so it just makes things easier. And I have my four arrays here. So the left clips, the right clips, up and down clips. And of course, I have to initialize these when I create my, my actual um, context variable here. And again, I'll just paste these in to save some time. We go. So I'm going to open the sprite sheet here and we can just see how this is working. The left clips, which is in the second row, um, every every array starts at index uh, x at zero, but y would be the player height. So it's start, starting right here at the top left of the left left facing character. And then I move over by player width. Player height stays the same. Then I move over player width times two. And then you can see here where I have the second, the index one and index three, these are the same coordinates. So what I'm doing is I'm going from index zero to one, to two, back to one, when I'm cycling through. And that's, again, just to make the, the animation look proper. So the, the arms are moving left, center, right, center, left, center, right, center, exactly like that. So I have those stored right there now. Uh, the next thing to update is to go down here where I'm creating my first source. I'm just in, uh, choosing 0, 0 here when I create my first rect. Uh, but to make this um, more consistent, I'm going to reference my new arrays just to make it more clear what's happening here. So the X is actually a context player. And I'll make the player facing down. And I'll use the first or the middle clip, number two clip. So the hands are at the sides. And it, uh, it looks better that way, I think player down clips. And again, I choose the, the first one for Y. Oh, and I have to change this to X and Y, just like that. So now uh, let's uh, recompile just to check on our, our progress here. Let's see. Move this over here, Odin run. And there we go. So we have our character starting in the uh, forward facing position with hands at the sides. You can experiment a little bit with this. Um, let's try instead of the down clips, let's face up. And you'll see that it changes now. There we go. So now the character is facing up. So I'll change that back. Uh, the next thing to update would be in the update and render section of the game loop. 
and I want to change these where I'm setting the source right here, instead of just referencing a single image like we're doing in the last video, uh, we need to cycle through them. So we'll grab our source, it'll be something like this, source, and we'll go through our player left clips, and then I need some sort of index here, but what is that index going to be? Uh, it needs to change at regular, like at regular intervals, and then in order. So uh, the way that I found online that I liked the best was using a function called uh, SDL uh, get ticks, which returns an unsigned 32-bit integer that uh, begins counting up from the time uh, of when SDL initializes, and it's in milliseconds. So you can divide that by a thousand to get seconds, for example, and we can get something like our animation speed, I'll call it. So SDL ticks divided by a thousand. Now, after playing around with this a little bit, um, I did realize that a thousand actually makes the, um, the, the, the uh, clip change every second, and it's a little bit too slow. So after playing around with the speed a little bit, I decided that 175 was a good number for my use. And we just grab our index like so. We do animation speed, and we do modulo uh, four. Now in other languages, modulo is just the single percentage sign. In Odin, it's the two. We do modulo four, and this will return a zero, uh, a one, a two, or a three. And that'll give us the index that we need to grab our clip. And it'll return it in order and at fairly steady, steady intervals. Now, uh, going back to the 175 that I decided on, that works well for my character speed and the animation relative to the speed of the character moving. For your game, it might be different. So play around with it and just get the, get the number that you like. So that gives us our index. And then all we need here is our source x and source y. That will give us um, the new image that we need to use. And you'll see that it'll cycle through them. So we'll do the same uh, for these down below. Instead of player left here, though, we'll do player right. Just separate a little bit so it looks it's easier to read. And here. Okay, and this is not right. This is down. And this is up. That should do it. And if you want to get a uh, get a better look at um, the the animation, then you can just comment out the changes to the destination. That way, the player won't move anymore, but he will turn, and then you'll be able to see uh, you'll get to see the movement. So recompile. There we go. So our character is standing still, walking forward. You can see how the arms move. Now, if we didn't cycle through, if we didn't use uh, the middle here, I'll go back to the clip here. If we didn't use the middle one twice, then it'll look a little janky. Uh, so you can experiment with that yourself and, and see what I mean. Moving there, moving forward, moving right, and moving left. The other thing I actually had to change on this, um, I decided, I thought, I felt it looked a little wrong when I was moving the character up and down. So I changed the... Let's see, yeah, the character width I changed to 25. And to me, that looked a little more smooth. But uh, yeah, check it out yourself and see what you think. There we go. So I'm happy with that. Uh, if you have any questions, then post a comment down below. I hope that helps and saves you a bit of time. I'll post links to the tutorials that I checked out to kind of arrive at this point. And if you end up using this to do other sorts of animation, like for uh, enemy characters or something like that, please share it. I'd like to see it and learn from it. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching. Cheers.